Hey, welcome to Polish with Ray. I'm Rachel and today I'm going to be sharing with you the polishes that I wore in March. Before we get started, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you like these What I Wore videos. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you do so you don't miss out on future uploads. So today I'm going to be sharing with you all the polishes I wore in March and oh my goodness, it was a lot. <laughs> The baby and I kind of started falling into like a little bit of a routine, a rhythm, I guess. And I finally had time to paint my nails and I did. <laughs> Altogether, I wore about 30 polishes in March. I, I know that's a lot, but I did use so many toppers. I also did a Skittle and a couple pedicures too. So, but yeah, altogether, I'm really pleased with the number of polishes that I wore and I have some stunning ones to share with you today. If this is your first time checking out one of my What I Wore videos, first we'll look at the polishes that I wore as pedicures. I'll give you my thoughts on those. Then we're gonna take a look at all of my manicures. First, the ones that I liked okay, then the ones that I did not like and might de -sash. and then at the end, the ones that I absolutely loved. I'll include some pictures and zoomed in bottle shots so you get to enjoy the polishes too. All right, so pedicures, I wore two this month. The first one is one from Zoya. It is Zoya Jordan. I would describe this as a pastel bubblegum pink. Jordan is a polish that I've worn a couple times as a manicure, but never as a pedicure, and oh my goodness, I might wear it every spring from now on. I already knew it had an amazing formula, but it just made for an incredible pedicure color. It took two coats to get fully opaque, it was very smooth and easy to work with. Granted, I do have the Z-Wide brush in here. Um, but yeah, Zoya Jordan is a cult classic. I feel like it's favorite among so many and for good reason. If you are looking for a bubblegum pink, I do really love this one. And then the other pedicure that I put on in March is one from China Glaze. This is Kid in a Candy Store. This was actually part of their spring 2023 collection, um, the Hello Sugar collection. This is the bright pink in the collection, not Sugar Junkie, the purpley pink, but the just bright, beautiful bleach neon pink. It was a little bit early in the year to wear this, um, I I added it to my spring rack as soon as I swatched it. Um, I did some comparisons on my Instagram and I'll link my Instagram down below in case you're not following me there. But as soon as I swatched it, I was like, oh my goodness, I'm definitely wearing it as a pedicure, but maybe closer to summer. Well, it sat there on my rack. I just stared at it and was like, okay, no, we're wearing it right now. <laughs> and it made for an incredible pedicure. This whole collection had a beautiful formula. I highly recommend all of them, but this one especially I just thought was such a fun color. It's actually coming off pretty color accurate on camera too. And if you're wondering, here's what it looks like next to Jordan. You can see Jordan has a lot more white in the base. It's a lot less saturated. All right, now onto manicures, and we're gonna start with the ones that I liked okay. Their first one was a combo. We're gonna see a lot of those, and I wore as a base OPI, that's Hularius, and KB Shimmer, a star is formed. I would describe OPI, that's Hularius, as a mint green cream. It leans a little bit yellow, not the kind of mint that leans blue. And then KB Shimmer Stars form is one of my absolute favorite toppers. It's a holographic flaky scattered topper. Scattered holographic flaky topper, there we go. So this combo was beautiful. I think I'm gonna be wearing it again, not this exact combo, but later this season, I'm gonna wear another pastel with this scattered hollow topper because it just sparkled. It felt light and happy and airy and it was just, a wonderful feeling. And I was surprised. I thought the OPI would have a really bad formula. I don't remember hearing very many people say that this OPI has a great formula, um, but I did at some point switch this to a paddle brush, uh, and that must have helped because I got it fully opaque in two coats. Um, actually, no, scratch that. I did. It did take three, but they were three easy coats, and I think I was able to just do two on a few nails. Um, but yeah, this combo was beautiful. Would wear it in the future. We'll probably wear something very similar here in the next month or so. By the way, I forgot to mention that this month I participated in a hashtag on Instagram, and I never do those, but I did this month, and it was super fun. It was hashtag Hillary and Stacy month of greens, so a lot of people wore green nail polish all of March. I kind of didn't do that. I wore them from March 1st through the 18th. Is that 
St. Patrick's Day. I wore them until St. Patrick's Day. And then I said, I'm wearing other stuff now. I'm ready to ready to move on. <laughs> um, but I did wear a lot of green. So that's why there are so many this month. It was really fun. I, I love participating in the hashtags and seeing everybody's green manicures. And on top of that, I like never repeat wear colors. Like if I wear blue, the next time I'm going to wear something way different from blue, like probably pink or white, I won't even wear blue and then like green or purple because it's just too similar. I want something drastically different most of the time. So for me to wear green for like 18 days, that's a lot for me. <laughs> I'm really proud of myself for doing it, especially with green, because y'all know I've not always been a green lover. But anyway, the next polish is a green. It's from KB Shimmer. It is Say It Ain't Cilantro. This released in Polish Pickup, and I would describe it as kind of a maybe a sagey green reflective glitter polish. It is a reflective glitter glitter bomb. It has a really thick formula. KB Shimmer's glitter bombs that are these reflective glitter glitter bombs get really thick really quickly. So I did have to add a lot of thinner to make it wearable, but once I did, wow. This was actually beautiful. I don't love reflective glitter enough for it to be in that love category. It still was a little bit thick on the nails, but my goodness, it just sparkled. It was another one I wore in the sun, so I got to see all of that gorgeous like twinkle from the reflective glitters. And I think this is the first reflective glitter polish that I've worn, except a topper. I do have a reflective glitter topper I've worn before. But this is the first reflective glitter full on polish that I will put on my nails voluntarily. <laughs> Y'all know that's not my favorite finish just because it's such a beast to remove, but this one made it worth it. It was so beautiful. Another manicure I really did enjoy, just didn't quite make it to that love category, was another combo. This one combined three different polishes. As a base, I used OPI Bubble Bath, which is not a green, but the toppers kind of made it a green. Then I topped it with two Bees Knees Lacquers. The first one is Bees Knees Lacquer to whatever end. And then I topped it with Bees Knees Lacquer, the right key. So OPI Bubble Bath is a peachy jelly nude polish. It built up to pretty good opacity for me in three coats. Then I layered on top of it one coat of Bees Knees Lacquer to whatever end, which is a shifty white multi-chrome with a really strong green flash. And then I topped it all with Bees Knees Lacquer The Right Key, which is a ghost flaky topper. It's got flakes that shift blue and green. This combination was absolutely beautiful. It got so many likes on Instagram, which doesn't matter. You know, it's not about that, but it just reaffirms to me that it's a really great combo. And I was really proud of myself for wearing it. I like really got into the toppers this month and it made me feel super creative and fun. I think I'm gonna wear a bunch more in April. But anyway, back to this manicure specifically, um, it just had so many shifts with all of those toppers. We got a gorgeous green to pink shift with to whatever end and then the blue to purple to green flakies in the right key. And then having bubble bath as a nude, it just kind of like, at certain angles you couldn't see the shimmer at all it just it had like a very ghostly effect as caitlin's watches would say but yeah it was a really fun super beautiful combination and now i want to layer everything over bubble bath all right taking a break from the greens um i do have a few manicures that i liked okay that were not green these are ones i wore after saint patrick's day this first one is another combo i told you lots of toppers this month as a base, I wore Static Nails Milkshake and then I topped it with By Danny Viana Sashes and Bows. I would describe Milkshake as being a baby pink cream. It has a whole lot of white in the base. It almost looks white with just a little bit of pink in it. And then By Danny Viana Sashes and Bows is a beautiful topper. It's got Aurora Shimmer that shifts copper to gold to red and then blue metallic flakies. So I actually ended up wearing Static Nails Milkshake by itself for a couple days. I had planned to wear it for a long time because I wanted to test its longevity. These nail polishes are really expensive. It's like how much? 12 milliliters for $16. I feel like I need to bring that up every time. I know it's a boutique brand, it's like fancy and stuff, but that's still a ridiculous price for this tiny bottle. So I was like, this better have a really good formula. And I'm happy to say it did, it made it worth it. <laughs> it has a gorgeous paddle brush. Um, I really do like Static Nails. They are one of the more expensive brands that I feel like are actually almost worth a price tag. 
but yeah this had a great formula it was actually opaque for me in two coats which I was not expecting and it had a really creamy base it applied beautifully and so then after wearing it on its own for two days I did add by Danny Viana sashes and bows this one released in August of 2022 hella handmade creations and this was such a fun combination because of the base color the shimmer didn't come through super apparent on the nails but I really liked how it kind of just gave it a soft ethereal glow and then the blue metallic flakes really stood out and popped against this pink base this is definitely a combo that I would wear in the future just didn't love it like wasn't like I want to keep this on my nails forever but really did enjoy it two more in this middle category the next one comes from polish and it's called blackberry ice I would describe this as having a lavender base with a shifting shimmer that shifts copper to gold to green and holographic flakes so this polish was really really beautiful I don't typically love lavender on me it just doesn't give me much pop against my skin tone even though my skin tone isn't lavender it just doesn't you know really stand out that being said lavender is still one of my favorite colors I think it's just a gorgeous shade so I did really enjoy this manicure I thought the shift in the shimmer was so beautiful and bold and I love a shifty shimmer with hollow flakes it's my kryptonite <laughs> I didn't feel like this one wore the best. It did have tip wear within 24 hours and it wasn't shrinkage, it was tip wear. Um, and then I also wish it would have been a little bit more opaque. I think my pictures show three coats with two layers of uh, polished her days, blurring base coat and snow. So I did really like this one, it just wasn't quite a love for me. And then the last one in this middle category comes from Rogue Lacquer, it's called Hatched. This one released in March of 2021's Polish Pickup Shop, and I would describe it as being a robin egg blue Corelli base with copper flakes. This has a gorgeous, gorgeous base color. This couldn't, in my opinion, be more perfect for spring. It's got a brightness to it, but it's not so bright that it feels summery. I found that a lot of the polishes that I picked out for my spring rack this season, and if you haven't seen my spring rack video, I'll link it up in the cards. But I found that a lot of my spring rack picks were very bright. I guess that's just what I was feeling this year, but this one truly put me in the mood for spring. It just has like a little bit of dustiness to the base, and it kind of reminded me of like a rainy day. And the contrast that I got with the copper flakes was beautiful, but they didn't pop super well against the base. Um, in the bottle, I feel like they show up very nicely, but in my swatches you'll see, um, I guess because the base is kind of on the creamier side, we didn't get that beautiful pond effect that I love to see in my Crellies, um, but it was a really pretty polish and I loved the base color. All right, on to manicures that I did not like, and unfortunately there were quite a few. The first one is from OPI, and this is To Infinity and Blue Wand. So this color is beautiful. If I was picking the polishes or ranking them based on how much I love the base color, this would be on the top tier for sure. It's a gorgeous sky blue cream polish. But the formula for this was so sad. <laughs> I got this in a mystery D stash on Facebook Marketplace and I don't know what the person did to it if they added acetone or what but it just had a very weird formula it was definitely on the thicker side but it wasn't like thick and gloopy it just was thick and did not self level at all so it had like brush strokes but they weren't from the polish being patchy it was very full coverage um, and looked great on the nails but it just like didn't lay flat like every time I moved the brush across my nail you could see like ridges and I don't have ridges so it was it was really bizarre so because of the formula this one is in the did not love pile I might play around with it a little bit more try to add more thinner and see if that helps but I don't know if y'all have any tips I'm all ears <laughs> Another one that just was not for me comes from Dom Nail Polish. This one is called Rosebud. This is a fantastic, fantastic polish. Very much unlike the OPI, my reasoning for putting this one in this category has nothing to do with the formula. The formula was perfect. It took three coats to get opaque, but they were three very easy coats. The flaky sit in a beautiful dark yellow leaning green base and they shift from pink to gold to copper to green to purple to blue. Lots and lots of shift. And the shift actually shows up so well on the nail. Um, 
this was dazzling. The only reason this didn't end up in the like or love category is just that I don't really like this base color on me. I don't know what it is, but usually dark greens, blues, and purples don't end up being polishes that I really enjoy wearing. I just typically like brighter colors or lighter colors, so this one just... And I don't know. It was almost spring when I wore it and it wasn't feeling springy and I didn't enjoy it. Beautifully made polish. It has nothing to do with the polish itself and just everything to do with my taste. I just didn't love it on myself. The next one was a surprise and I feel like I'm being really picky and putting it in this category. It comes from Wildflower Lacquer and it is Enchanted Spirit. I would describe this one as having a kind of muted green leaning blue base. It's almost teal and this vibrant, bold shifting shimmer that shifts from copper to gold to green. This released in the charity box in August of 2021. So this one was another similar situation to the Dom nail polish. Gorgeous polish. Um, it did not build up to opacity in three coats. It still showed quite a bit of nail line and I might have paired it with a blurring base coat. But yeah, it was the same situation with Rosebud. I just did not like this base color on me. Although I'm really coming around on greens, there are still those shades of green that I'm just not super fond of that I don't enjoy wearing. They're not fun to me. So I am tempted to keep this one because I it's wildflower and I love wildflower. And the shift in the shimmer was so beautiful. Like I was staring at my nails all day, but it just wasn't a polish that I got excited about. And I've said before about my collection that I want the polishes that I have to all be ones that I really love and can't wait to wear. I don't have enough room in my nail room. I don't have enough room in my heart. <laughs> for polishes that don't give me that amazing feeling. So if I don't love it, someone else is gonna love it. I need to pass it on, I think. Two more in this did not like category. I was being pretty tough this month. <laughs> the next one comes from Cirque Colors and it is Persica. This one has a peachy, cream sickly, creamy base with copper metallic flakes, but they look really like almost orange. So this is a polish I've worn, I mean, this might be the fifth time that I've worn this polish. It has a significant fill line. But this time around, and it's been a few years since I've pulled this one out, this time around it just did not, I didn't like it. I think I would love it more if it were the summer and my skin tone were a little bit more bronzy. But I just felt like it washed me out a little bit. It was kind of nude looking against my skin tone and it wasn't super fun. I really do love this line of polishes from Cirque Colors. They're speckled finish polishes. But yeah, this base color just didn't excite me this time around. I will be holding on to it because I know I've loved it before, but this time I was just meh, didn't love it. Formula was good though. It took three coats to get opaque, but it was very smooth and easy, and that's with the skinny brush. And then the last manicure I did not like comes from um, OPI and Penelope Loose. This was a combination um, of OPI, I'm so swamped with Penelope Lou's Nuricha Dancer. I might be saying that wrong. OPI, I'm so swamped is a swampy kind of guacamole green. And Penelope Lou's Nuricha Dancer is a gold magnetic polish with gold flakies and holographic glitter. I don't know what made me come up with this combo, but I really liked it in my head and it didn't translate on the nails. I like the colors together, but I think, I don't know. I think I was just kind of rushing when I applied the magnetic. I got overzealous with how I've been able to do my nails a little bit more now that the baby is sleeping a little bit better, but that doesn't mean I have enough time to properly apply a magnetic. That takes time. And so because I rushed, the magnetic line spread a lot and it just kind of looked like an unorganized chaotic mess. <laughs> But I did like each polish individually. I wish I would have just left the OPI on its own or added a gold flaky topper and saved this beautiful Penelope Loose topper for a manicure when I had more time. And I kind of actually realized once I put this on that it reminded me of a polish that I already have and completely love. It was pretty similar to a Stella Chroma from April 2021 polish pickup called Corporate Magazine Still Suck. It's got that same like avocado-y green base, maybe slightly darker than the OPI. Gold flakes, a shifting shimmer that that shifts blue to gold to green. Um, yeah, but 
It looked very, very similar to this. So it's good to know I can kind of do corporate magazines, still suck, not quite, but a little bit because this is a polish that I am crazy about. All right, and then now we're gonna take a look at manicures that I absolutely loved this month. The first one comes from Stella Chroma, and it, this was their August 2022 mystery polish. So I've talked about it a million times. I'm sure you are tired of hearing it. But Stella Chroma does do an awesome mystery subscription box. You basically get the funds deducted from your account automatically and a polish that is a mystery polish shipped to your door each month. I love seeing what kind of cool polishes uh, Pam the Maker creates and this one was a winner. I'll link the details for that in the description box. So the August 2022 mystery has like a gorgeous, blue leaning mid-tone green base and it is packed with multi-chrome flakes. Typically, I do not like multi-chrome flakes. I just, I don't know what it is, but I realized a lot of the polishes going into my new stash were polishes with multi-chrome flakes and I was like, oh, I guess I don't really like those. <laughs> but this one was different. Um, I don't know if it was the base color paired with the multi-chrome flakes, but something about this combination just reminded me of dinosaurs, which I know is so random, but it was a combination that worked. I thought this base color was super flattering on me. It was packed with the multi-chrome flakes, so there were tons of, tons of shifts. And it has that beautiful Stella Chroma Curly formula that I love so much. And this is why I love the, the Stella Chroma Mystery Subscription Box. I wouldn't have bought this because um, the base color, I don't think I have anything in this base color. I wouldn't have imagined it would have looked good on me. And I would have probably steered clear because of the multi-chrome flakes, but this was 100% one that I wanna wear again soon. And yeah, so it's awesome. Another one I really enjoyed came from ILNP, it's Bluebird. This one has a vibrant pastel blue base and blue metallic flakes. I have other polishes from this original speckled egg finish collection from ILNP. I have Sunday and is it called Hatchling? Starling, it's called Starling. And although I really enjoy those two, I love those two actually, this one is my favorite I've tried so far. The base color I thought looked so beautiful on me. It's got just enough purple to make it interesting and unique. It's pretty saturated, but still a pastel, and it has a lot of those gorgeous crushed blue metallic flakes. It reminded me of a beautiful bird egg, and it was perfect for the weeks leading up to Easter. From Scufflaw Nail Varnish, we have the Chia Pet Conspiracy. This one is a vibrant key lime pie base with, I guess they're matte hex glitters and lime green. There's some hollow hex glitters as well, hollow metallic green hex glitters, and then micro green glitters too, lots of glitters. I think I see blue iridescent flakes in here as well. This is one that I kind of had mine to hold off um, until closer to summer, but I just couldn't wait to wear it. It was such a fun color. Y'all, I loved this polish. I've got to get my hands on more polishes from this brand. It had a beautiful formula. It did take three coats to build up, but it wasn't one of those crullies, even though there's so many glitters in this bottle, it was not one of those glitter crullies that just felt super chunky on the nails. I think I did use a glitter smoother, but I don't think I would have had to with this one. And it was just so bright, so fun. This polish and the Stella Chroma alone made me really grateful that I participated in that month of greens hashtag. Because I bought this last year and just have been dragging my feet and wearing it. And now I think it's gonna be one I wear every single year. It was that much of a happy polish. <laughs> Two more manicures. This one comes from Bluebird Lacquer and it's called Rock of Sages. It released in May of 2022's Polish Pickup. And this is a beautiful bright green shattered holographic with a blue shimmer. When this released, I remember being very excited about it, but oh my goodness, nothing prepared me for how much I was gonna love it when I wore it in March. I wore it on a beautiful sunny day. We had lots of sunny days in March, fortunately, and this in the sun, wow. <laughs> 
like it i just love this finish from bluebird lacquer it feels like you're wearing a glitter polish the amount of hollow the amount of sparkle is unreal and you still get that easy application this was opaque in two coats and no difficult removal because there's no glitter in here i don't see how lucy does it but i will buy this in every color i love her shattered hollows and this one was fantastic i would love 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 to see it make its way back for rewind sometime um, they do vote on that in the bluebird lacquer facebook group i believe so if you're not part of that go find it um, you need to vote for this because it's really pretty <laughs> and the final manicure i wore in march was a really beautiful springy skittle it used six polishes in total, the beautiful orange shade, and they're all creams, these first five. Um, the beautiful orange shade is China Glaze Tangerine Heat. The yellow shade is Cirque Colors Buttercup. The green shade is OPI This Cost Me a Mint. The blue is KB Shimmer Harbor A Crush. The purple is Sinful Colors Tempest. And then they're all topped with Caloris de Carol Hatch Me If You Can. This manicure was so fun. I did not want to take it off. It just felt like a party on the nails. These five colors together just made the most beautiful springy skittle. I was seeing so many springy skittles on my Instagram feed. They were very inspiring. And so I wanted to wear one. And so I just picked some different colors that I had on my spring rack, put them together, and they were so cute. <laughs> I like that they weren't super pastel too because that's beautiful as well, but I've just been in the mood for these more bright, saturated, almost summery colors this season. And so this gave me that warm weather feeling, um, but it still felt pretty spring. And then the topper, Caloris de Carol Hatch Me If You Can. I haven't worn this since I swatched it for the brand. Oh my goodness, I've been missing out. It is so cute. It's like this gorgeous black, um topper or it's got it's got a clear base and then it has some black micro glitters black hex glitters black square glitters and they're all matte this has the perfect base to glitter ratio it gives you just enough glitters to give you that speckled look but you don't have to control how many come out you don't feel like it's covering up the base color you don't need to go in for a second coat it's the perfect amount caloris to carol makes some really nice toppers and this one is actually still available or at least it was at the time of me recording this video so i will link this and any of the available polishes i've mentioned today down in the description box but yeah the cream were fantastic the topper was fantastic the formula for the creams were all really good um, I was especially surprised by uh, sinful colors tempest that one has a super skinny brush and it went on so smooth the china glaze tangerine heat and the cert colors buttercup were the only ones that were three coats but this cost me a mint from OPI sinful colors tempest and KB Shimmer Harbor Crush were all two coaters. So those are all the polishes that I wore in March. Let me know down in the comments if you have and enjoy or don't enjoy any of these polishes. And what stood out to you this month? Which of these polishes are you maybe wanting to grab or keeping your eye out for in a D-stash? What do I see myself wearing in April? Well, April has already started, but I see myself leaning a little bit more towards um, pastels, definitely fewer greens this month but like those traditional springy colors that make me think of fresh flowers, like corals. I'd like to wear some purples, some pinks. Hopefully you all enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.